What's going on, Buddy Crypto Kid here, coming just again with another video. Today we're doing a quick deep dive into DSO. I'm definitely going to be a little critical in this video, uh, but I don't want that to kind of steer you guys away. Um, I'm just going to be offering kind of my perspective of where DSO is at right now as an investment, kind of as a as a product where its future could be going and kind of its status in the current kind of world and the whatever trends are going on really in that social media environment and how DSO might be able to kind of fit into all that. So let's just go ahead and get started. I'm just telling you guys about some of the backing that DSO has. So you have Sequoia here, you've got uh, Horowitz, Coinbase Ventures, um, and that's all going to amount to around $200 million, which if you look at the market cap of decentralized social DSO, even fully diluted, it's not at $200 million. So right off the bat, um, it definitely is nice to know that they have the funding to kind of keep... Um, keep exploring new avenues with this project, keep upgrading, keep paying their teams, and uh, just kind of keep paving that road. Like you're going to see, that it's definitely not a finished product um, by any sense. However, you know, they're on the right track. So regardless, that's very nice knowing that they have money in their back pocket um, to kind of survive, especially the period that we're about to get into probably where there's not going to be a lot of money coming into the space and a lot of other projects um, maybe won't be able to compete with teams like these so that have the funding so that's one thing to note for sure um, the other thing to note is that just kind of over the past week or so we've seen a nice little rally um, so coins like DSO that kind of have a nice use case right now might be able to kind of piggyback on Ethereum and Bitcoin's run up right now um, and maybe make some gains in the short term. But I'm sure most of you are here for the long term. As we know, the market probably won't turn around for some time. We'll say one to two years. That's really when DSO is going to be able to kind of fit in and be able to bring you guys those massive gains. We're talking about, you know, 10x, 50x, 100x. And because the market cap is so extremely low and you know, the market cap of the industry itself, the social media industry is so massive. Um, there's obviously massive gains that could potentially come about here. So I think a lot of people should be excited when it comes to quality projects. Very few will have this low of a market cap. Um, what you see is a lot of projects have overinflated market caps, and that's just not the case here. So that's why I personally love it as an investment. But yeah, let's go ahead and just find out a little more about it. I'm going to play this video for you guys real quick. The reality today is that five corporations control social media. They own your name. They restrict your content. They monetize your every move. And their time is up. So just a quick snippet there. Um, basically, their points here were one, they're trying to profit off of you. Um, which is obviously a massive issue. I think that a lot of people at this point have kind of woken up to the fact that there are hundreds, if not thousands, of trackers on their on their computer, on their phone, on everything that are just kind of tracking your every movement, tracking what you do after you leave the app, some seemingly without your permission. Um, it's definitely pretty sketchy. And if you think, you know, how are these uh, platforms making money without being able to kind of, um, you know, sell you something or, or whatnot, it's because they're able to sell your information, of course, which I'm sure a lot of you know um, that that's happening. So that's obviously, you know, a lot of people don't like that uh, kind of being tracked. It's obviously a pretty scary thought. Um, and that's one thing that bringing social media to the blockchain and whatnot is going to help with because if no one owns or is profiting off the platform, you don't really have to work about someone trying to make a buck off you in sketchy ways. The other point they made was that uh, uh, like certain social media platforms will restrict users. That is one point that I can't necessarily get behind too much because if we go ahead to – and this we're just going to use YouTube for this. There's obviously um, other platforms besides YouTube that are banning people and whatnot. Um, but if we look at terminate, uh, terminated and permanently banned YouTubers, we're seeing that a lot of them, If you, I'm just going to scroll through, you guys can read the sidebar on the right side of the screen here. Um, their reasoning for being banned, and a lot of them are very um, legitimate. Some of them are, are quite vulgar, honestly. Um, and it's, it's, probably, it's probably good that they're off the platform. It's, it's definitely good that they're off the platform, um, really. So it's not always the worst scenario um, for people to be banned, and I think that DSO would have to kind of formulate some sort of mechanism uh, to be able to kind of part ways uh, with some of the users that are, you know, inciting violence um, or doing, you know, really mean, nasty stuff um, on the platform, you know. And this is definitely where it gets sketchy and where they could maybe be a little more lenient. So with figures like, let's say, an Andrew Tate, if you guys know about him, or a Donald Trump, where some people are, are kind of trying to take a side and it's just a very polarizing figure, they'd have to kind of take a stance on that, unfortunately, and say, um, you know, one way or the other how they're going to handle cases like that. But, I mean, I think that the one thing that DSO could do that social media platforms aren't really doing um, is they could have, like, really set rules where it's not this kind of vague gray area. Um, so with Twitter, you're like, 
hey, why did this figure like Donald Trump get removed yet X or, or Y on the other political side didn't get removed? Um, and that's just an example. I'm not trying to play politics here, but I'm just saying there are have been some interesting cases where you're kind of seeing um, social media and like the people behind the platforms definitely picking sides here um, that people definitely get frustrated about and, and, and for good reason. So I think that if Diesel could at least have a, a better outline than some of these platforms, it would definitely um, stand a bit of a better, sh uh, better shot. Um, the other thing here is that getting further into kind of like the trackers and everything like that um, and like malicious intent behind some of these social media platforms, we're seeing talk about even you know, TikTok being removed from U.S. users because, you know, people once again might be abusing users' information and, and gathering data for the wrong reasons too. So once again, blockchain is just going to allow for these things to kind of be unbannable, and that's just going to kind of give more power to the users um, once again. And like we said, you're not going to be used for the wrong reasons. In fact, no one is using you because it's not a company um, profiting from you engaging with uh, the software and whatnot. It's just, you know, open open software, um, open for you to use and kind of navigate as you wish, um, which is obviously pretty interesting, pretty cool concept uh, there. So regardless, other competitors you guys might think of, or let's say Parler, who Kanye West was actually thinking about uh, purchasing just recently. If you go ahead and look into here, you know, Parler basically sent out this email where they kind of listed all these VIPs within the company. Um, and a lot of the VIPs, um, so to say, responded saying, I haven't logged on to the app in two years. I have no affiliation with this company, blah, blah, blah. So, uh, and if you look at their user base, you know, it only had 1.2 million visits in September, um, whereas like a, a getter or something had 7.1 million, um, so, or, or Gab with 12.8 million. So there's obviously, you know, the competition is not super strict right now um, in the space, and there's not really been a clear winner Obviously, these numbers all, even the best one, even Gab, does not even come close to comparing uh, to a TikTok or, or to a, you know, Twitter, YouTube, and whatnot. So it's going to take a lot for DSO, but the more of these, you know, kind of sketchy dealings that are going on, the more of these reports, the more of these bannings uh, that happen, people are going to be looking for an alternative, and it's up to DSO to kind of have that bottom line um, that's going to attract some of those users to its platform, um, and ultimately, they kind of just have to create a better user a user base. Right now, I think that the problem is the people that have the know-how to kind of get onto and navigate DSO are already in the same community. So there's not like a broad spe spectrum of users on DSO. A lot of the people on DSO already know each other from, you know, Twitter or Reddit or whatnot. Um, and I think that, you know, as time goes on, that's an issue that might even just solve itself. Uh, but yeah, just kind of the ease of access to the general user. Um, it's honestly not too hard to understand the app. So I think they're doing a pretty good job at that. Um, as well, but I think that this is all just kind of a, a timing thing. You know, they're going to have to continually adapt and improve and kind of meet the customer's demands. Um, and if they're able to do that, you're probably going to see how these dots connect as time goes on. And I think for those reasons, this isn't financial advice, but I do think it's worth um, some investment consideration just because of the fact that it truly is uniquely positioned to solve a lot of these massive problems in a huge industry. So that's the video for today, guys. Hopefully that got you a little bit excited. Um, it's going to make you do your own research. Like I said, this is not financial advice. This is all my opinion, um, but we're definitely in an interesting time right now, and DSO is kind of at the forefront of a lot of the, the, the trends that are going on in kind of this wave uh, and this pullback against social media. So who knows what the future is going to hold, but I do love DSO. Um, as an investment right now, I think it's worth looking into. So if you guys like this video, make sure to like and subscribe, and I'll see you all in the next one. Peace.